Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Major ML2158G. Let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing this Pagani Design PD1717 Amish to Longines Spirit. And Grego is wearing my Tandario GMT watch with the Pepsi bezel. Grego said Master Skywalker tried to return the sweater that Princess Leia bought him for Life Day, and the girl at the local Walmart said that she just can't stand the returns of the Jedi. He said, is it because of those stupid Ewoks? Alright, let's take a look at the watch. Came in this box that doesn't say measure. The box cost me a whole extra 70 cents. I could have got it without the box. In hindsight, I probably should have just saved the 70 cents because this box isn't much. But here is the watch. This is the fifth measure on my channel. This one is just your basic PE90 power small second chronograph with no subseconds, which makes the chronograph functionality suspect at best. But at least it doesn't have fake pushers like a recent AliExpress budget chronograph I reviewed. What stood out for me was the sandwich dial, which made the watch visually appealing. If you don't like the gray dial, there is also a black dial. If you don't like the brown leather strap, there is also a black mesh bracelet, but that only comes with the black dial, and I prefer the gray. Plus, I like the looks of the leather strap anyway. Plus, mesh bracelet clasp can be awkward to use. I spent the extra 75 cents and got it in a box. The watch is 42.7 millimeters wide, so it's a full-size watch. 49.8 millimeters lug to lug. It's only 11.2 millimeters thick. Has a 20 millimeter lug width. And only weighs 59 grams on the supplied leather strap. There is basically no bezel, as you can see. And then we have the dial. The dial is gray with no sunburst effect. Once again, black is an option. And this is a sandwich dial. And as you can see, they have cutouts for the indices. And there's a green uh, inner dial. And that looks kind of nice. And I like that. I think the sandwich dial looks pretty good. Then we have the major name up top. No mention of water resistance or anything like that, or quartz or anything like that, but that's fine because you uh, basically know that this is only going to have your basic 30 and it's going to be quartz at this price. And then we have the hands. We have the stick hands and they are loomed. Loom is not great. Then we have the second hand and then we have the date at the 430. And I don't mind the date. I don't think it ruins the look. I'd rather have the functionality of the date. Would have been nice if the date wheel was color matched, but that's not going to happen on a $20 watch. This is just your basic small hand chronograph. So the sub dials are pretty much standard. We have a 24 hour indicator on the right. We have the chronograph on the bottom, but it does have a nice big red hand. So at least it's easy to see it. And then we have the chronograph minute counter on the left. And there are no subseconds. This isn't a very useful chronograph, but it does at least work. Just press the top pusher, and then the chronograph starts ticking. Press it again to stop it, and the bottom one resets. Pretty simple. Then we have the crown. The crown is an unsigned push-pull, and it's pretty small. And the crown action is awful. Look, look how loose it is. And then when you go to set it, you get some serious minute hand jump. So, yeah, don't like the crown action at all. But that's just the reality of a sub-$20 quartz chronograph. And then the pushers... Uh, they're just simple pushers and no fake uh, screw downs or anything like that. I guess they look okay. They work fine. Then we have a flat mineral glass crystal. Uh, I'm sure there's no air coating or anything because there's plenty of reflection. Plus you don't need it on glass anyway. 
and it's a $20 watch, you're not going to get it anyway. Then we have the case. Uh, I like the case. It seems good enough. Of course, it's not steel. This is a coated alloy. And then we have the, as you see though, the lugs are really thin, kind of like wire lugs. So that's kind of a nice look. It makes it look like they're actually solid, but they're not. This does have spring bars. I do like the looks of the lugs. It's kind of different. Then we have the case back. Case back says measure stainless steel back. Stainless steel back is a good tell that the rest of the watch is not. Then it says water resistant, which means 30. And then it gives the model number. And this is a press on case back and it doesn't have any fake notches to make it look like a screw down. And I did remove the case back to take a look at the movement. The movement is a PE90, which is a pretty standard cheap Chinese chronograph, small second chronograph. That's pretty common in chronographs of this price range. Seems to do the job. Once again, the crown action is really loose. The strap says genuine leather. It doesn't feel like the best leather in the world, but it says genuine and I'm not going to cut it to see if they're lying. But it's, I think it's real. The strap's fairly thick and it's going to need some breaking. So it is a pretty good strap considering the price. And the stitching looks nice. Then we have the two keepers, one fixed, one floating. Then we do have a signed buckle. The buckle is not very good though. It's pretty thin and the prongs really thin. Of course, I would always recommend if you get a watch on a leather strap, buy one of them cheap deployment clasps on AliExpress. You'll need a 20 millimeter for this one. It just makes the watch so much easier to put on and off. And plus it saves the strap. The strap will last a lot longer. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. I think it looks nice. It wears nice. It wears nice and flat. At 40, almost 43 millimeters, it's a fairly big watch, but it's so light, it doesn't feel big. And the lug to lug's pretty short, and being on a strap, you don't have to worry about end links or anything like that, so it looks nice. I have three notches left, though, so maybe eight and a quarter at the very largest. Of course, this is a 20 millimeter, so you got probably have plenty of straps that fit it. Here we are in the loom room, just wearing the watch. I knew it didn't have good loom. I can even never even tell it had loom until I shine my UV flashlight on it. But let's see if they uh, least loom the inner dial. As we speed up the time, we see the inner dial is loom shining through the outer dial cutouts. Everything is fading fairly fast with the hands being just a bit stronger, but not good. About what I expected. What do I like about this watch? Well, I do like this gray sandwich dial with the green inner. I think it looks nice. It does have a genuine leather strap. I felt better leather, but it's least leather. I kind of like these wired lugs. They look nice. And I like the fact that it has this red chronograph hand. What are my gripes and groans? It's a small second chronograph with no sub-seconds. It has very loose crown action, making it hard to set. The buckle is kind of flimsy with a pretty flimsy prong. And the loom's very weak. Do I recommend this watch? Well, if you like the looks of it, sure. It's not a bad watch for the money. I only paid 20 bucks for it. And it does look and wear nice. As I always say, get a deployment class for it as the buckle isn't very good. And who cares if it is signed? Well, thank you for watching my review of the Major ML2158G, and I will be back with the unboxing. I got something from AliExpress the other day. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.